Okay. Okay, everyone. I am really excited. This is a special show. It's a sweet show. And I want to share a little bit about this book, Your Holiness. And we're going to learn a little bit more about trusting in God, prayer, and a uh, higher power, and how we can utilize it to highlight every part of our life. So fasten your seatbelt. We're going to learn and grow together. And here we go. Hello, my listening friend. It's so nice we can meet each other on the air on this beautiful best day ever. And for those of you who have been listening to the Lillian McDermott radio show for the last seven years or the last day or so, welcome back. And if you are new to the Lillian McDermott radio show, just know that I've been waiting for you. It is my purpose, it's my sole purpose so that you can feel that you have a place to go to when you need a friend. It is my commitment to provide alternative ways to heal and it is my mission to make awareness, responsibility and truth a part of our everyday life. And I hope you, my listening as well as my viewing friends will feel empowered to embrace a new truth and live the life, life of your dreams. Now today, as I mentioned many times, you're gonna want to put my phone number in your phone and keep it there for a special day whenever you find a book that you want. And today, we're giving a book called Your Holiness. And so for those of you who are um, wanting a book that will help you discover the light within, then please make sure you call when the time comes, 407 373 Five nine five nine. But I'm going to tell you a little story about how I found this book. So in 2013, I chose to focus on my own personal growth. And it was during that time that I heard about um, the founder of the Ford Institute which was a place where I had an option. I had an option to become a certified life coach. And so that was, would have been an option for me, but I chose to stay in Florida. And so five years later, after becoming a life coach, we're in the process. And by the way, um, we were in the process of selling our rental property when all of a sudden I see an envelope in a tiny little place in the laundry room with my name on it. I opened it and there was a book called Your Holiness. And I thought, whoa, who sent me this book? There was nothing attached to it, nothing. But I knew the book was special. I don't know why, but I knew the book was special. So I brought it home. And the book sat on my desk for quite some time until I received an email from the publisher saying, hey, did you get our book, Your Holiness? And so then I picked the book up and I thought, I want to look and see what this book is about. And I didn't realize who the person was. And it is Debbie Ford. She is world renowned author, teacher, and humanitarian Debbie Ford. And for those of you who have never heard of her, you're in for a treat. Uh, unfortunately, um, or as, as, as the way life is, Debbie Ford is no longer with us. She ascended five years ago in 2013, as I understand. And we are very great. I'm very grateful that we now have Ariel Ford. She's also an author and a teacher and a love expert to share about Debbie Ford's story, her journey, and her legacy. And since it is our sole purpose in life to give and receive love and knowledge, I am grateful that Ariel Ford is here to do just that. Welcome, Ariel, to the Lillian McDermott Radio Show. Thanks, Lily. It's really great to be with you. It's nice. It's wonderful to be with you, too. Now, before we start talking about the book, I want to talk about you. Share a little bit about your background and so that we can get to know you, because we're going to get to know Debbie a little bit more, too. Um, well, these days, I'm a love and relationship expert, and I teach people how to find love, keep love, and be love. And over the course of my career, I've written 11 books. Uh, one of my biggest bestsellers was called The Soulmate's Secret, How to Manifest the Love of Your Life with the Law of Attraction. And my most recent book is called How to Turn Your Mate into Your Soulmate. So uh, that's what I do for fun every day. I get to talk about love. That's wonderful. And so how did you get involved in the loving aspect of your career? Because I know that you've written all sorts of books, right? Yeah. 
Um, it was not anything I actually planned to do. I spent most of my life working as both a book publicist and a literary agent. And um, during the first 15 years I had my agency, I worked with Deepak Chopra for 12 years, Wayne Dyer, Marianne Williamson, Don Miguel Ruiz, Neil Donald Walsh, pretty much everybody in the self-help personal growth field. Mm -hmm. But in 2004, I really felt like I had completed all my sacred contracts to launch all these superstar authors and experts and shut my business down. And wow. the next thing I knew, I got direction to write my true story of how I manifested my soulmate at the age of 43. Mm -hmm. So um, that book, The Soulmate Secret, has now been published in 21 languages in 40 countries. And the formula has worked for literally tens of thousands of men and women around the world. Wow. Maybe that's another show that we can do. <laughs> it sounds like a, a very special show. There's a lot of people out there looking for their soulmate. And maybe we can make that happen. We can manifest the show into happening. And we're going to continue. Okay. For those of you who would like a copy of this book, it's called Your Holiness. It's Discover the Light Within by Debbie Ford. And uh, be the 10th caller or texter. 407-373-5959. That's 407-373-5959. And we're going to continue our conversation when we return worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com. We'll be right here waiting for you. That's interesting, um, Ariel, how, you know, we are called, we think that we're finishing up something and we're called to something else. How did you hear that, that voice within you? Um, well, it was actually my sister's voice. I was uh, on a cruise with her. She had a couple hundred of her coaches on a cruise and she spontaneously said, you know, why don't you come up here and give a talk to everybody about how you manifested your soulmate? And I had never, ever considered doing that. I mean, I, I'm, I've been an excellent manifester for a long time. And when I realized I'd never used all my prayers and processes and rituals to manifest love, I thought, well, let me see if it works. And it worked. And once it worked, I sort of forgot about it till Debbie said, come share this information. And so I gave a little 45 minute talk. And when it was over, I had 200 people rush, you know, rushing the stage. <laughs> you know, I need this information. So the book came out of demand and then it just, just, you know, spark something that turned into being invited to speak at Esalen and Omega and the Chopra Center and celebrate your life and all these kinds of places and events and eventually morphed into this career. So, um, you know, basically what I did was I used my own experience uh, because this shit works. That's all there is to it. <laughs> And then once I had manifest the soulmate, I had another realization, which was that I had absolutely no partnership skills. So I dedicated myself to becoming a student of love. Mm -hmm. And over the course of a few years, I did 200 one hour one on one interviews with the world's leading love and marriage experts and then road tested all the advice that I got. And that became turn your mate into your soulmate. Mm, very nice very nice we had um um the love life five love languages uh gary had come yeah. on and neil donald wash has been on the show marianne williamson has been on the show i'm not trying to name drop but i'm just saying it's wonderful yeah. to to see the circles that we have found ourselves in and and how wonderful these people are as well yeah. i tried to get dr chapman to do an interview a million times and they would never go for it uh, really i think because i'm so known and connected to the law of attraction and he's a christian minister mm. and they tend to look upon my beliefs as sort of the work of the devil but i i recommend his book to everybody yeah absolutely and okay and, looks like we're, get, we're getting ready to start and i am um i'm looking forward for you to share the story of how you found this book and so here we go welcome back to the Welcome back to the Lillian McDermott Radio Show, where we always learn and grow together. I am your host, Lillian McDermott, and today we have Ariel Ford. She is the sister of Debbie Ford. Uh, Debbie Ford is the founder of the Ford Institute. This is a place where you go when you want to 
through some personal growth. And uh, that was certainly something I considered a long time ago without even knowing anything about Debbie. Someone said you should go there. And I think at the time, she doesn't, I don't know if she was not doing it anymore, but I ended up staying here uh, to do my personal growth and my journey and becoming a certified life coach. But here, this book has found itself into my hands, and there's a reason for it. And so uh, Ariel Ford, Debbie's sister, is here today to share a little bit more about this book, this treasure, this final treasure that was discovered. So share a little bit. Thank you so much, um, Ariel, for sharing your story, and love for you to share the story of how this book came about. Sure. Um, and before I do that, I just want to say for, for your um, peeps who don't know who Debbie Ford is, mm -hmm. she was a number one New York Times bestselling author of many books, including The Dark Side of the Light Chasers. And her body of work was all about the shadow self, the dark side, and learning to love and embrace and find the gifts in the parts of ourselves that we think are most unlovable. And she was on Oprah many, many times and had a global following. And her work lives on today, even though she's been gone for more than five years. The Shadow Process, which is a transformational weekend workshop, still lives on. And you can learn more about her and the book at debbieford.com. But here's how this book came to be. And it's just such a crazy story. <laughs> so uh, a good family friend of ours is a man named James von Prague. And he is the world's most famous medium, a man who talks to dead people. The movie The Sixth Sense was all about his life. Uh, there was a TV series with Jennifer Love Hewitt called Ghost Whisperer, which was based on his life. And he's like, the big, the big cheese when it comes to talking to dead people. Mm -hmm. And he called me one day uh, and said, you know, I've just moved to San Diego where, where I live. And he said, I want you and your husband and your mom to come see my new house. And when you do, I'll give you a reading with Debbie. And what's super special about this is that you actually can't pay James to get a private reading. He doesn't do private readings anymore. If you want to see him, it's usually in a room with 3,000 other people, and you have to hope that your dead one is pushy enough to break through mm -hmm. and get a reading from the stage. Mm -hmm. So uh, we got to his house, had the, had the grand tour. It was magnificent. And as soon as he sat down to begin the reading, the first thing my sister said was, Ariel, you have to write a prayer book with me. And my immediate response was, no way. <laughs> I don't want to write my own books, let alone try to figure out how to write sure. your books. Sure. And she was very insistent, and I was very much a no. And then we moved on, and you know, we had other messages from her, and other dead relatives came through. And then about every 10 minutes, she'd pop back in and say, Ariel, you have to write a prayer book with me. Well, this went on for 90 minutes and at the end of 90 minutes I said to James you know if we don't say yes she's never gonna leave either one of us alone and he said okay I don't know how we're gonna do this because obviously I would need him to hear her you know he said but we'll just say yes and we'll figure it out later yes so said, okay Debbie somehow some way we'll write this prayer book and that day as we were driving home my husband said you know I spent so many hours with your sister, taking her to the doctors and her chemo treatments. And he said, I remember her talking about having written some prayers. Why don't you email her office and maybe they have some of them and then that would be the beginning of a book. So I got home, I sent out a one sentence email that basically said, do you by chance have copies of any prayers that Debbie wrote? And the email that I got back said, oh, I can do better than that. She wrote an entire manuscript. It's attached. Wow. So I opened it up and I read it in one sitting and it was 200 beautiful pages, perfectly edited, just this amazing work. And I was blown away that I didn't know about it, but it was just gorgeous. So I picked up the phone to call her editor at Harper One who also is my editor, Deepak Chopra, Marianne Williamson, and James Von Prague's editor. <laughs> he knows the whole family well. And, and I said, hi, Gideon, it's Ariel. And he jumped in immediately and said, I'm so glad you called. For the last four years, I've been feeling so guilty. Your sister always wanted to write a prayer book, wow. and I always talked her out of it. 
And I said, well, here's your redemption day. Check your inbox. I just sent you the book. So the book, Your Holiness, came out just a couple of months ago, and it's just a, a beautiful work of art. And, and although we call it a prayer book, it's really much more than that. It's a very prescriptive book. So mm -hmm. while it does have a lot of original prayers that she wrote, as well as prayers from um, some of her favorite poets, whose names are going by me right now, including Marianne Williamson and Rumi and, and folks like that, it's really her personal journey of healing from addiction and other things she suffered from and how prayer saved her life and healed her life. So you get her story, you get the prayers, and at the end of every chapter, there are exercises that you can use for yourself to connect to your most divine self and to find healing, no matter what your problem is. And it doesn't necessarily have to be an addiction, although I believe we're all addicts. Mm -hmm. Some people use drugs and alcohol, gambling, sex, and food. Other people like me, I'm addicted to Amazon one-click shopping. <laughs> all addictions. I have a real thing for mini red velvet cupcakes. So, you know, we all need some angelic support now and again. Yes, that's absolutely true. Now, you know, you had mentioned about um, Debbie's legacy, but let's talk about how that got there. You mentioned that she suffered and dealt with addiction for, for many years. Um, would you like to share a little bit about that and what prompted, which prompted her to be an incredible um, a coach, uh, an incredible person that understood addiction and was yeah. able to help people through that as well. So share a little bit about how her addiction started and how she dealt with it. Well, she, she began using drugs as a 12 year old, you know, and it really escalated. And by the time she was in her late twenties, she was doing so much volume of drugs that even she knew that if she did quit, she was going to die. And she had already been through three drug treatment centers, and every time she went to a center, on the 10th day, she would run away, and she would leave and start using again. So when she was in her fourth center, and she got to day 10, and she had this, this impulse to run, instead of running, she locked herself in the bathroom, got down on her hands and knees, was crying, sobbing hysterically, praying to God to give her the strength and the courage to spend one more day in treatment. And she did. She felt this overwhelming peace come over her, and she knew she could do another 24 hours. So that became her daily ritual, was to pray every day for the strength and courage to stay sober. But then once she got out, this was uh, at a time when I had just started working with both Deepak Chopra and Wayne Dyer. So it was maybe 1991. It was quite a while ago. And I would send her cassette tapes of theirs that they would give me. And then we would talk about what we were learning from them because the information was just so new and unique. Mm -hmm. And I remember her saying that she had listened to one of the tapes, and I think it was a Deepak tape, and, and in it he talked about how people who had had terminal illnesses had managed to go into cr complete remission, cha change every cell in their body because every seven years, all your cells are new again and completely heal. And she began to think, well, if that, that's obviously true and possible. There's the scientific evidence that yeah. people have had these recoveries, these miracles. Then how come she couldn't heal completely from being an addict? Because she said after... Her, she was now in her third year of sobriety and she would go to an NA meeting and she would stand up and say, hi, my name's Debbie and I'm an addict. And it would feel inauthentic to her. And even though she honored the 12 step program for having gotten her this far, she had a sense that there could be another level of healing that she could find to escape this this prison of, am I really an addict for the rest of my life or is healing possible? So that's what started her on the journey. And at the same time, she enrolled in a JFK University in Northern California to study transpersonal psychology. And she came across the work of Carl Jung and the shadow self and the dark side. And she began to study this very intently and to synthesize it and use and make up exercises for her own self-healing. And as that grew, um, she was really, really uh, enamored with it. But the, the big thing that happened was uh, one day, maybe after she'd been in college for a year and studying all this, 
um, we went to lunch with Deepak Chopra. And at that time, her work was she was a witness prep person for, for trial attorneys. So she would take witnesses that had to go on the stand and transform them to be authentic and believable. Mm -hmm. And Deepak said to her, well, I don't understand what you do. Explain it to me. So Debbie went through this whole explanation and he was very intrigued and he said, well, I have 12 people on my staff. I want you to take them for the weekend and see if you can transform them. <laughs> and so she did. And on Monday, after they all went back to work, he called her up and he said, I don't know what you did to change these people so dramatically and make them so amazing, but I want you to give this thing a name and a title and start teaching it here at the Chopra Center. So that was really the launch of her career. Amazing. And to, to be with Deepak Chopra and launch a career with him. I'm sure that he was very instrumental in encouraging her to continue on in, in her growth as well. Completely, yes. Amazing. And they actually ended up writing a book together. Uh, there's a book called The Shadow Effect that is co-authored by Debbie Deepak and Marianne Williamson. And then they went on a speaking tour together. And they and Debbie also produced a movie by the same title. So, um, you know, if anybody wants to see the movie The Shadow Effect, it's um, it's going to be on Gaia TV any second now. Oh please. yeah, yeah. I'll have to check it out. We'll have to check it out. So, you know, with, with the shadow side, um, how can, you know, there's a lot of things that, which, which I, I talk about nutrition, I talk about so many different ways that we can live the life that we desire, the life of our dreams. But nutrition is not the end all be all, although it's very, very important. But it's harder for people to look within and see who they really are, what's causing that numbing or what's causing that addiction. Is there anything you'd like to share to maybe awaken someone, to make them curious to learn more about the shadow side? Well, we have, we have two shadows. So we have a dark shadow, which is you know our anger, fear, hate, jealousy, envy, pettiness, all those kinds of things. And we beat ourselves up for experiencing those kinds of emotions. But then we also have a light shadow and we're almost in more denial about our light shadow than our dark shadow. So our light shadow is the parts of us that are loving, kind, generous, compassionate, giving. And Debbie's work was really about recognizing both shadows and finding the gift in both. So it would be easy to find the gift in your light shadow. Oh, I'm a compassionate, generous person and I give back to others, so mm -hmm. yay me. But when it comes to the dark side, it's often hard to find, well, what's the gift of my dark shadow? And the way Debbie really discovered this was she was taking some kind of a leadership workshop somewhere one day, and she was presenting in front of the room, and the woman running the course said to her from the back of the room, you know, Debbie, you're a real bitch. <laughs> hold that, hold that thought, because we're about to go off the air. Please, okay. if you want a book, 10th caller, 407-373-5959. The book is called Your Holiness, 407-373-5959. And we're going to continue our conversation with Ariel Ford when we return worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com. We'll be right here waiting for you. Okay. <laughs> that was like, I didn't want to interrupt, but I oh. had to. Oh, that's a good cliffhanger. Yeah, that's a cliffhanger. You're a bitch. <laughs> on the air. I don't know if they're going to be turning me off on the air, but but we'll take that it's, chance. Actually, there's much worse words said on the air these days. That's yeah, given, given the state we're in, you almost, you almost can't offend people anymore. I know. I know. I, you know, it's, it's interesting. Um, I remember, I don't know what it was. Oh, I had uh, Dr. Connealy. She's from California, Dr. Connealy. And she called, um, she, she helps people, um, she helps them with their emotional aspect because we've had doctors come on the show say 90 plus percent of all disease is due to trauma, childhood trauma, emotional perception, and people don't want to look at it. And um, so she got up at a conference, uh, Dr. Connealy, and said, hey, doctors, if you ever have a patient that is not willing to, you know, before you give them any treatment, before you figure out their treatment plan, make sure they do the emotional ask, the work, the emotional work. And there's so many people, and, and I've, I've had doctors come on and say, hey, 
you know, if you are willing to do the emotional work, it'll be cheaper to fix the body. So mm -hmm. it's, it's wonderful that Debbie was working on this way before doctors are awake now, the, you know, holistic doctors, integrative doctors are waking up and saying, you know, this is, they're coming out and saying, you know, this is where healing begins. Mm -hmm. It's in the emotional aspect and dealing with the shadow side, the light side, the dark side, whatever, whatever it is that we need to look at, but people just don't want to do it. They'd rather take the pill. Right. You know, take whatever pill the doctor is going to give them for the symptom, which is the body screaming at them. Right. So, you know, so that that's the, the, the voice in our head is what causes that, you know, that vicious inner critic. I, I, um, I was working with this, with, with this author and he, he called his, his, the inner voice in his head, the Vic, vicious inner critic. And Vic would come out, he had a committee a committee of, of people talking in his head, but it was yeah. really, really interesting how everybody has that. But, um, so as we're, you know, as, as Debbie is, you can go ahead and finish the story and maybe we can go in when we go into a third segment, maybe you can, we can go into the book and the prayers and you can share some of the prayers, but as she's being called a bitch, isn't it true that a lot of people that do this work are called bitches? I think women are called bitches all the time, whether they deserve it or not. <laughs> Why do you think that is, Ariel? Oh, that's a long story about the patriarchy. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, we're witnessing on TV the dying of the patriarchy, you know, and it's, you know, it's time for women to reclaim their power and to, you know, kick some butt phase two of the women's lib movement needs to like get on board right away. Yeah. And it, and we, we need to stick together because the work that Debbie began um, needs to continue. And I know it continues with all the women and men that she helped along the way. And it's, it's amazing how I would hear her name when I was making a decision to become a life coach and hear about the Ford Institute. And, um, and here she is coming back to me five years later. So for four years, the book was in a computer. Yes. And four years later, then he was, James said, come on over and I'll give you a reading. Four years. Now, had he ever done that before? Uh, you know, I don't, I don't think he ever had a result like this before. It was certainly unplanned, you know, but he was also very close to Debbie. They were also very good friends. So it's not surprising that it all came about this way. And it's kind of perfect that, you know, we were able to get through the worst of the grieving process before we uncovered the book, because as you probably know, it takes a lot of energy to put a book out there and get it done. So, uh, ha you know, had, had it come up sooner, I don't know that I would have had the energy or enthusiasm for it. I do want to talk about grieving in our fourth segment, because there's a lot of people that are grieving. And it may not just be a loss of a loved one. It could be the loss of their innocence or their loss of, you know, a marriage or the loss of whatever it is. It's still yeah. a loss. My friend, my friend Ken Druck calls them living losses. Mm, I like that. Okay, I would love to talk about that. So let's shift. Oh, we didn't finish the bitch story. Oh, yeah, I need to finish the bitch story. Okay, so when we come back, I'm going to put bitch. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to reframe that to the bitty story because I don't know if they're going to say something to me off the air. We can say bitch all we want because it's going to be YouTube. Uh, but on the air, I don't know if they'll say anything. Oh, anyway, I was telling you about Dr. Keneally. Dr. Keneally said to this woman, you know, tell me about your life. And she found out that her, her husband was horrible. And so she says, I know what gave you cancer. It's the asshole that you have at home. And she said that on the air. <laughs> <laughs> and my producer at the time wasn't listening and we did a pre-record and when it aired omg so and and he like i said well i know that my producer is going to take that off but he didn't hear me say that and then he aired it with the uh, asshole on there. well you know that word's regular on cnn you know uh really I, i've never heard asshole in I, well our president called countries in Africa shitholes and that was on every major network so I think what was true 
you know, two years ago about what you can say and not say has definitely changed. Yeah, George Carlin would would just be very upset about yeah. this. His his, his, his whole routine, his yeah. whole routine has to change. <laughs> Okay, here we go. We're ready to get started. Now, when we get back, I share a little bit about my social media and then I'll reintroduce you. Okay. And so be on that cliffhanger because I'm going to, we're going to go in where, where we left off. Okay. And here we go. Welcome back to the Lillian McDermott radio show where we always learn from one another. And today's teacher is Arielle Ford. She is the sister and her own, in her own right, she is an author as well and a love expert. And I'm looking forward to maybe having a conversation on, on manifesting your soulmate, which I think a lot of people would love to hear about this. But today we're talking about the book, Your Holiness by Debbie Ford. Be the 10th caller or texter, 407-373-5959. This book is about discovering the light within through the prayers that we can say within us there's so many different ways that we can feel connected to the divine everybody has their way of doing that and hopefully when you need a friend.com is a place where we can all come together and experience the life that we want the when i talk about responsibility i'm talking about owning your life the good the bad and the ugly and making and finding purpose in all of it i want to encourage you to go to when you need a and uh, while you're there please become a subscriber and follow me on my kick all the buttons subscribe on all my social media and on youtube and by the way you may want to listen to this show on youtube so go to when you need a friend.com and you can subscribe for the YouTube channel. And whenever you subscribe, the shows are sent to your email, your phones, your tablets, wherever it is that your email goes. And so go to there, go there. And while you're there, check out my sponsors page. Without my sponsors, this show would not be on the air. So figure out ways that you can support my sponsors the way that they are supporting the show. So many different ways to stay connected. And you can listen on podcast and also you can call me at 407-373-5959, be the 10th caller or texter to win a copy of Your Holiness by Debbie Ford. And it's how we can take ownership and discover that light within. Now, before we went on the break, we were on a cliffhanger where um, I don't know if we'll be bleeped or not, but who knows. But I am I'm very excited that Ariel Ford is sharing the story of the book, Your Holiness, and so share the story about Debbie. That sure. So we were talking about how she discovered the gift in her dark side. And it happened when she was at a workshop and the workshop leader said to her, hey, Debbie, you're a bitch. And she was shocked and she said, well, I know that. How does she know that? And, <laughs> and she was devastated. And the workshop leader said to her, well, isn't there something good about being a bitch? There must be some way in which it really serves you. And she thought about it. And at the time, her favorite thing to do was flip houses. She was constantly remodeling houses. And she said, well, yeah, when my contractors and the work guys are doing the job good enough or fast enough, it really helps when I get bitchy and nasty and start cracking the whip. So yes, that would be a gift of this shadow self that I call bitch. Mm -hmm. That was sort of the start of the whole thing was helping people to look and find the gifts of the uh, negative emotions that they were most embarrassed by. And so in, in her book, The Dark Side of the Light Chasers, there's all kinds of ways to really understand and grasp this. There's exercises you can do and ways to transform your own dark side into a light side. Wonderful, wonderful. So let's talk about the book because I'm encouraging everybody to call 407-373-5959, be the 10th caller or texter, and win your own copy of Your Holiness. This morning, I spent some time in meditation and prayer, and I just put Debbie's book over my heart, and I opened it up, and I had just the most wonderful experience in prayer. I think I got the, the longest one. I don't know because I went through and I looked at every single one of them. But the one that I opened up was the internal war, which I thought was really a beautiful way of looking at what's going on in our body, our mind, body, and spirit. But let's talk about what you learned about Debbie as you're putting this book together. 
as you're finding all these prayers, what did you learn about Debbie that maybe you did not know about her before she ascended? Well, I had certainly known about her history and discovery of using prayer in her life, mm -hmm. but I was really unaware that it was a daily practice for her. Mm -hmm. I was unaware that she had written all these prayers. I didn't know uh, how important Emmett Fox was to her, who is the, the poet that she and the guy who wrote the most prayers that are in the book. So it was it was very enlightening to really see that side of her, uh, which I'd never spent a lot of time with. And the thing that I most enjoy about the book is, you know, after you read it from front cover to back cover and you utilize it for your own life, you can do what you did today and use it as sort of an oracle where if you've got a question about something, you can open to a random page and get an answer or get a prayer or get something that is soothing to your soul. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good, very good. So what was your favorite one? What is your favorite prayer? Oh, you know, I've got a lot of them. Let me see if I Because I know there, there are some that are really, really short and others like the one I read this morning um, is a little bit longer. It's about two, three pages. Well, but I have it's to really say, nice visual. It's a very nice visual. Yeah, more than my favorite prayer, because I don't know that I have a favorite one. My favorite part of the book is when she talks about how we have the choice and the consciousness to tune into different frequencies. So if you're stuck at what she would call lonelyandmiserable.com, <laughs> you're the one who can change the dial to happy, satisfied, and content.com. And it's up to us, you know, we could pray and ask God to do it for us. But the truth is, we have the ability to make those shifts for ourselves. And it's having this awareness that first, we're stuck in a story. And B, that, you know, by accessing our higher self, our divine self, and making some time for some sacred rituals, mm -hmm. we can totally move into something that's more filled with light and more positive. So for me, that was my favorite part of the book, but I'm just going to randomly pick and see where I, so, so here's one that I just randomly picked. It says, let the light of God flow through my heart, my mind, my body, and my soul. Let me open up to all of God's love. For when I am wrapped in her arms, I am one with my beloved. I love that. I love and that. And a lot of them are just that short, you know. They're just wonderful. Yeah. She also says you can tune into joy.com, happiness.com, peaceofmind.com, <laughs> and and you know, I think I think that's the lesson for all of us. I mean, truth is we're human. We're imperfect. We all have core wounds. And for those of us on a spiritual personal growth path, we're constantly seeking to get over something. We want to be healed. We want to be done with it. Mm -hmm. But the truth is our core wounds really serve us. So while being on this path of growth, we can learn to manage things. We can mitigate. We can self-soothe. We can dial it down a little bit. It's never really going away. So what we need to do is learn to embrace who we are fully, dark side, light side, wounded parts of ourselves. Love those pieces of ourselves anyway and understand that we may spend the rest of our life with self-doubt, which I think 99.9% .9 of the world has, sure. our poverty consciousness, our fear of abandonment, whatever our trigger is, it's probably never going to go away but we can master the art of living with it and learn that, oh, it's you again. Oh, okay, I see you're here. I recognize you, yeah. Right. Yeah, so I'm gonna give you three minutes, you know, go ahead, throw it at me, beat me up for three minutes, but then I'm gonna move on. I'm gonna go for a walk, I'm gonna take a bath, I'm gonna do my tapping, I'm gonna drop into my heart, I'm gonna write a prayer, I'm gonna journal, I'm gonna do something to consciously choose something else. And one of the fastest things that you can do is simply look up to the ceiling and smile at the same time. When you're looking up and you're smiling, 
it's impossible to physically feel anger or sadness or pain. Your, your brain chemistry changes. Yeah. So it requires that we pull up on our big girl panties or big boy pants and we become self-aware enough to notice what we're feeling and thinking and then do something about it because we have that kind of power. I love it. I love it. You know, I discovered that. I was interviewing a guy that uh, he was the smile doctor. And so I did an exercise that was in the book, which is to walk while you're smiling, like have a smile on your face the whole entire time. And I was, I live on the beach, near the beach. And uh, so I walk the beach as often as I can in the morning while I wait for the sunrise to, to arrive. And I decided I was going to go for a walk and I was walking with a smile on my face. And I realized you cannot even have a, ba- a, a thought that doesn't support you during that time. And dur- during that time, just a smile, something as simple as that makes you look more beautiful too. Right. And so there's so many different ways that a smile, looking up and smiling, you know, what a great reminder to set ourselves up for success. Right. And the other piece of it is not to go into denial. So you don't want to suppress all your negative feelings. You know, you don't, you don't want to just like spin out into this thing. Oh, I'm having a bad thought. I should go have a happy thought. <laughs> you want to actually give yourself permission to experience all of it. You just don't want to get stuck there. That's right. Gabby always described it. She said, you know, it's like, let's say, you know, you're feeling ugly and unwanted. Okay. And, and try- hold that thought. Hold that thought. And we're going to continue our conversation when we return worldwide at when you need a friend.com. 10th caller texter for your holiness, 407-373-5959. And we're going to continue our conversation with Ariel Ford when we return worldwide at when you need a friend.com. We'll be right here waiting for you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. I just, um, I just have totally forgotten. There's my little cue Something going on here. <laughs> That's okay. You know what? It's good. It's good that you, you know, that this is a conversation. We're having a conversation and most conversations don't get interrupted by right. commercials. Most commercials right? <laughs> <laughs> but we get to talk, we get to continue talking. So you can continue that thought. Um, well, I was just going to say that, um, Debbie always talked about it, like taking your negative emotions and trying to push them down. Yeah, that's like trying to hold a beach ball underwater. Eventually, it's going to pop up and hit you in the face. Mm -hmm. So you may think that, you know, nobody knows how miserable you really are or how angry you really feel in this moment. But the truth is we're all so connected in the field energetically that even though you may not verbally express how you're feeling, you're leaking everywhere. Just like when you walk into a room where people are fighting, there may be silence, you still feel slimed by the negative energy. Yes. So it's much, I believe it's much easier to out yourself, you know? So if if somebody calls and says, well, how are you? I don't automatically say I'm fine. Unless, you know, somebody is inconsequential to me. I'll just usually think about it for a second. It's like, oh, you know, overall, I'm great. But at the moment, I'm feeling a bit frustrated about ABC. (laughs) So I don't have to get into a whole pity party about it. But I believe in outing yourself first. It's like, Mm. like if you and I were going to go out to lunch, one of the first things I would say to you is that I'm the world's messiest, sloppiest eater. I'm going to get my food all over me and Probably all over you, and I may steal your French fries. <laughs> I won't order French fries, but you you might want to order extra French fries. <laughs> oh, see, I order I eat French fries at least once a week, whether I need them or not, because they're my favorite food. And even though I'm mostly gluten free, sugar free, dairy free, and, and there's so many other things I have restrictions on. I only do it on the 80 20 plan and the yeah. other 20 percent of the time I enjoy I enjoy eating. So I, I, I totally agree with you. I, I um, do you know who um, Dr. Esselstyn is? Mm-mm. Oh my gosh, he is like any doctor that is aware that food is medicine. Dr. Esselstyn is one of the, he, he co-wrote the China study. I don't know if you know the China yeah, study. No, but I, you know, I, I run in a circle of all my friends are in this business, whether it's Mark Hyman, JJ Virgin. Oh, there you go. Okay. So you have Pearl Mutter. I get, yeah. I, I get advice from all of them. So absolutely. And, and all those are, are, are wonderful. Dr. I said, cause I always say I belong to the 80, 20 rule. 
don't yeah. tell me what to eat. And I have food allergies, so there's certain things that I just can't have. But for the most part, if I want something, I eat well most of the time. And if I want to eat something, I'm going to have it. Well, Dr. Right. Hesselston said, you know, I had this woman and this, I, thank God I didn't say it out loud. And I, he said, this woman came to me, and said, Dr. Hesselston, Dr. Hesselston, I follow your diet 90% of the time. And he slammed his fist on the interview. He goes, he goes, that's not my diet. Cause you, you destroy your endothelial wall, you know, 10, 20% of the time. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, I better not say anything about my diet. Well, you know, there's, there's a lot of people who are really evangelical and the truth is, while their diet may be good for a lot of people and it may be really good for them, there's not a one size fits all, you know, yeah. it's, yeah. I have thyroid conditions. So people say spinach and kale are superfoods, but if I eat raw spinach and kale, it screws up my thyroid. So there's just, you know, you have to figure out what's best for you and what's best for you today. Cause what's good for you today may not be good for you in six months or maybe wasn't six months ago. Like I was told I'm allergic to eggs. I eat at least a half a dozen eggs a week. So maybe I was once allergic to them, but I have no discernible negative reaction to eggs anymore. Yeah, that's, that's great. That's great. And, you know, um, Dr. Neil Barnard, he was the one that talk, talks about not one size fits all. Right. And he says, you know, like you can take someone who's a shoe size number seven, uh, seven and or, or, or 10 and put them in a size two seven, it's not going to work very well. So yeah, nutrition is so important and it needs to be, you know, if, if with the stuff that you're talking about and understanding and um, being intuitive and allowing that intuition, we can use that with nutrition as well. We and there's also, that. you know, the belief you have about it, the epigenetics of it and all of that, because you know, that. often when I have something that I know is really naughty I just remind myself how much fun I'm having eating it and the love and the fun transmutes you know the, the high carb level of whatever it is sure you know? sure sure when I, do, when I do you know eat some treats I enjoy it to the max and I try to eat them in the most beautiful setting possible I love that you know um who was it I was with somebody um at a, a conference I think it was just this guy that was sitting next to me and he was talking about um, he was having a cheat day uh, and he called it a cheat day. And someone said, why don't you change that to a holiday, like a vacation day? It takes away that negative feel because if you're feeling like you're cheating on something or it just doesn't resonate well with your body and the body's going to think that you're cheating and you're doing something horrible. So I like how you eat it. And it's like, I drink no matter what it is. I love beautiful China. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what I'm drinking. It doesn't have to be alcohol. It could be just this beautiful mixture, mocktail or whatever, and this beautiful, you know, fluted champagne glass or a martini glass. It doesn't have to be alcohol. It could be just about anything. It's not what you drink. It's how you drink. It. It's not what you eat. It's how you eat it. But we do need to focus on good health and nutrition because, you know, we're, we eventually will abuse our body if we just keep... Mm with that philosophy well, i'm sure nobody listening to you is eating big Macs, so <laughs> i hope not i hope not but i mean i haven't had a, a big mac ever i don't think i've had maybe when i was in my in high school maybe i did maybe yeah. i did but anyway here we are we're ready to start our fourth segment so i would love to maybe dive into the did you finish your story i'm like i'm so distracted i can't remember <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, we're going to have to get you back and we'll have to finish up every story we left open. So we're going to finish our, our uh, but I want to, I want to switch on to um, grieving and being able to, to grieve in a way you talked about the, the passing through. And so let's talk about that. And I have other, I have other questions for you as well. So here we go. This is our last segment. Can you believe it? It went fast. It's gone fast. Welcome back to the Lillian McDermott Radio Show, where we always learn and grow to together. Today's teacher is Ariel Ford. She is the sister of Debbie Ford, but she's more than just a sister. She has she has done so much in her own life. She's a teacher. She's an author, and she is a love expert. And for those of you who want to learn more about Ariel Ford, you can go to arielford.com. 
and learn a little bit more about her. You could also go to, um, and it's um, the, for, for Debbie's um, email address, or not email, website, I, I had it here. The Ford Institute. Is that where we um, send actually people? go to debbieford.com. So debbieford.com. Okay. Yeah. Cause the one that I was given was the Ford Institute. So yeah. debbieford.com. We have um, arielford.com and learn a little bit more, dig a little deeper because many of us are willing to take a pill to numb whatever your body is trying to tell you. But the reality is if we dig deep, we might discover the root cause. And, and when that happens, as we've had so many doctors come on the show say, once you heal the spirit, once you heal the mind, your body will just follow suit. So with that in mind, uh, oh, for, the, for those of you, 10th Caller or Texter, the book is called Your Holiness by Debbie Ford. It's Discover the Light Within. It's a book of prayers. Um, and be the 10th caller or texter, 407-373-5959. So I have to ask you, Ariel, as you put this book together four years later, or is it five? Because you must have started about a year ago working on this book. Yes. So it's been well, five years. Was done. It was just really the, the process. Putting it together, yeah. Putting publisher needed to do and then you know trying to come up with you know how do you market a book when the author's not here <laughs> have you seen that because you know as someone ascends and someone leaves this earth perhaps people try to find another person to follow have you seen a, a decline or is 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 everything as strong have, have the book the book been as strong as all her other books um, you know, it's probably too soon to tell because it hasn't even been out six months yet. Uh, and generally, she's got a good core audience. So it's just getting the word out there. And that's been going really well. And the thing that's been most fun is that uh, on all the interviews I've done for the book, and I've done gazillions of them, um, the radio hosts and the podcast hosts are just loving the book, you know, and they end up reading to me their favorite prayers. That's wonderful. But that's been really fun. Well, with that in mind, I have a question for you. As you were helping make this book occur and come out into the world and be birthed into the world, have you developed or have you always had a prayer practice? Because that's something you discovered about your sister. Have you, because of this book, maybe your prayer practice has grown or um, how, what has you know, happened I, for I you? I have a, a very large spiritual toolkit that I use for myself and it doesn't, it does not include prayer, which is why I was so resistant to, you know, her telling me we had to write a prayer book together. So I um, created something for myself years ago that I call a feelingization. Hmm. And it's like a visualization, except it actually works to manifest things because a visualization is just pretty pictures in your head. Oh, I want a new blue convertible BMW. I can see myself driving down the freeway in it. I can smell the leather seats, blah, blah, blah. But if in your emotional body, you feel you can't afford it, you don't deserve it, you're never gonna get it, that, those feelings cancel out all the pretty pictures. Sure. So I took something from the Institute of Heart Math called a heart lock-in, where you drop from your head to your heart and you re-experience the feelings of love, appreciation, and gratitude in the now moment. And when you're in this state of feeling love and gratitude, it's a measurable, scientifically measurable state they call heart coherence. That's when you can drop in your biggest desires, whether it's for a physical thing, an experience, uh, a new way of being, a healing, because you're now in the present now moment and if we had more time i would talk to you about the quantum science of all of it yeah feelingization really work and i give them away for free on my website and the easiest address for people to remember is soulmatesecret.com okay. if you go to soulmatesecret.com there's a tab called free stuff and that's exactly what it is it's lots of free stuff and there's a lot of free feelingizations on there so i i don't meditate I don't do mindfulness. I don't pray. And yet I consider myself a very spiritual person because I have sort of put together my own practice. So either I'm doing a feelingization or I'm doing the Sedona method or I'm uh, taking aromatherapy baths. And that's where I generally talk to my sister. When I'm in the bathtub, I can hear her from the other side and she's 
talking away and giving me messages to give to other people. So that's my practice. That's wonderful. Okay, so with now, let's dive into this. There's so many people that have experienced loss. And um, sometimes we get stuck. We get stuck in that place of mourning. And I think that and I, and I know that feelings are so important. And as you said, and I've heard Eckhart Tolle, and I even had a conversation with him where he's, you know, I asked him, I said, how do you tell somebody as a coach to, to not feel that or to let it go when they're in the process of feeling? So, you know, I, I learned that you, you let the, you acknowledge the emotion, but don't let it stay within you. How have you been able to, as close as you were to your sister and that you still have conversations with her, how do you encourage people to go from that mourning to realizing that you're never alone now? Now you have this well, person with you 24-7. It's, it's an individual process for everybody. And, and I don't believe in telling people to mourn faster. Correct. You know, they're mourning as fast as they can, and they, it's their own process, and, and grief comes in waves, you know, in one moment you're a puddle on the floor, and five minutes later, you know, you're fine, and things are together, and you never know when the next wave of grief is going to hit you. Mm -hmm. what my, the thing that really turned things around for me was that even though we knew for years that Debbie was dying, it was not a sudden thing. She had a long, slow, horrible, rare form of cancer that, for which there was no cure or treatment. And, um, but even so, once she was really gone, the, the physical loss of her body was almost unbearable. Mm -hmm. So even though intellectually I knew where she was, sure. I knew she was in a good place. And James had given me a reading like within days. So like I could communicate with her on that level. There was a piece of it, the physical piece that was like this giant mind fart, you know, <laughs> like, like, where are you? And I have a friend in India who's a holy woman. And I was talking to her, trying to tell her, like, I couldn't. I couldn't wrap my head around this. And she said, she explained it to me. She said, she said, you and Debbie were like dolphins and you had sonar for each other. So when you weren't together, you would put out your sonar. Where's Debbie? Oh, Debbie's in Denmark or Debbie's in little Italy or Debbie's on an airplane or Debbie's driving boat to school. And then you would have this comfort level and then you could call her, text her, email her. And there was all this connection. And she said, now you're putting your sonar out there. And it goes into an abyss and it just goes and it goes and it goes and it goes and never comes back. There's nothing for it to come back with. And that's the sense of loss. That's the devastation. Sure. And she said, what will happen is that you will learn a new form of communication. Mm -hmm. And when you have that new form of communication, that powerful physical yearning will dissipate. And that's exactly what happened. Now, would I like to have her back? Well, yes, of course, if I could have her back in a healthy body so she wouldn't be miserable, yes, I would like to have her back. But at the same time, there's a level at which our relationship has gone way beyond what it was before, and it's much deeper, and it's instantaneous, and it's like she's always with me. Mm -hmm. So she's not gone, and often she'll come to me in dreams, and when she does, I want to get a video camera out because it's more real than real when I see her in my dreams. So, you know, I'm now at five and a half years. I've had some time to go through this. But for anybody who's at the beginning of the journey, all I could say to them is it's not always going to be this bad. And yes, it sucks beyond belief. Yes. And, and with that in mind, thank you so much for sharing your story and for this book. For those of you who'd like a copy of this book, of course, there's so many different ways to get it. And to make it easier, you can go to whenyouneedafriend.com. The book is there waiting for you. And be the 10th caller or texter, 407-373-5959. Ariel, thank you so much for your words of wisdom. And I'm looking forward to maybe having some more conversations with you. And to you, my listening friend, just remember, I'll be right here waiting for you worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com. This is Lillian McDermott wishing you love, peace, joy, and unexpected abundance. Make it the best day ever. ever. <laughs> Good job. That's the best ever, ever. Good job. You know, we could have probably done a three-hour show, a three-hour show. And uh, because there's just so much to, to talk about, you know, when it comes to metaphysical and when it comes to the emotional aspect, I, because 
I am, this is not Hay House or it's not a, you know, where people tune in to listen to this stuff. I'm taking secular, the, the secular and trying to get them to see that there is a new truth out there, that there is something yeah. different. And so you did a great job and hopefully they'll be curious to learn a little bit more about the shadow side, about grieving. Oh, about, awesome. Thank All you right. So well, much. you know, let me know. I can do an hour with you on finding love, an hour on keeping love. You know, there's just, I'm happy to do it. Just let me know what works for you. Wonderful. Wonderful. Maybe Thank I'll you. I'll eventually start looking at the chat box, but I completely like never look at <laughs> the chat box our chat that that chat box is our friend yeah <laughs> but you did great you know i'm sorry i had to inter interrupt at, at times but i'm glad that we were able to talk about this is there anything that you would like to share before we i turn off the the camera and uh um you know i would just say for anybody out there that's single and doesn't want to be uh, what I know with absolute 100% certainty is that there is lots of love for everybody out there. And I have a free 75 minute webinar if anybody wants to tune into it that's single. And it's it. It's at a very specific URL. It's soulmatepassion44.com. Ooh, soulmatepassion44.com. Yeah. Soulmate. I'm working with somebody right now that I'm going to give this soulmate passion. passion. 44.com. Yeah. 44.com. Now, how long have you been married? Um, over 20 years. Wonderful. Yeah. Isn't it wonderful? When you're, where do you live? I live in Florida. What part? Cape Canaveral. Oh, okay. I grew up in Hollywood. Yes. Yes. How wonderful. How wonderful. Do you come to Florida at all? Hardly ever. I have a 90-year-old aunt in Port, Port St. Lucie. Oh, that's very close from here. Okay, this well, show will I, be heard. This show will be heard at t noon and five in Point St. Lucie. Oh, okay. Well, I need to come see her sometime this fall, but I don't have any plans yet. But, well, yeah. if you do, reach out. Yeah. Love to to maybe have lunch and and uh, yeah. share share some more conversation. And okay. let me just uh, say goodbye here to uh, the the show and and uh, thank you so much, Deb. Um, no, Debbie. Ariel, we've been talking about Debbie. Thank you so much. And to you, my viewing friends, thank you for watching today. I look forward to our next conversation.